series on backup banjo. Hope you're enjoying this so far. And uh, again, <clears throat> uh, this is not, this is just basically to teach you the licks. It's not to teach you this certain sequence of licks as the, ba the backup part for whatever song I'm doing. In this case, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? It's just to show you how some of these backup licks will fit into a uh, given chord scheme okay but it's mainly just to add to your bag of tricks as it were so I'm going to start with my G chord again now you may have noticed in my previous video this finger here is flattened down over three strings and I've sort of learned that the best way to teach this is to teach the G minor chord first have that down all you got to do is add your middle finger to the third string fourth fret and you have G major G minor G major so it's not that I'm going like that and then changing everything to go to the major chord I'm just putting down one finger putting down one finger for the major chord taking it off for the minor chord You'll see that in this first lick, I do my pick chop, just like we did in uh, Handsome Molly. But notice now I'm doing five, three, and a hammer from three to four, and five, those are my frets. Four, two, three, one are the strings that I'm playing. So I'm, I'm essentially, if I'm playing my G chord according to my instruction. I start with my uh, this this finger flattened down. My first finger is flattened down over three strings. That's actually a B flat. Right third fret, third and second and first string. And now I just add my ring finger and my pinky both on the fifth fret, fourth string and first string. G minor chord. Now if I put my second finger on, it's G major. So that gives me this ability to hammer on from the third fret to the fourth fret on the third string. So I do pick, chop, five, two, three, one. When I hit the third string is why I'm hammering on. Five, two, three, one. This could, could take some work to get to this. This is where you can make it sound good. And it, you have to mash pretty hard with your uh, index finger to make sure all of this stays in place while you're doing all this other stuff with these other fingers. So that's the way that needs to sound. It needs to be a good four, two, and then a hammer, two notes on the third string, and then one. Four, two, three, one. Okay, that's the way that's going to go. So I'm going to do that twice on the first two measures. Pick, chop, four, two, three, one. Again, four, two, three, one. So that might take some work just all by itself. Just, just spend some days or weeks, you know, perfecting that. Okay, so the next lick we did in Handsome Molly is the, uh, the slide lick up here working out of this shape, this uh, inverted G shape. And again, just uh, as a review, I'm doing my inverted G, taking off these two fingers and sliding 
my index and middle forward one fret. Sliding from seven to eight, and sliding from uh, six to seven with my third string. Even though I'm only playing my second string. Five, two, two. I want this finger to be in place for when I do my next moves. And third finger, first finger. I go over this quite a bit in my uh, Handsome Molly backup video. You'll want to check that out if you haven't already. And then uh, second string, third string, third string. Like I said, we've already learned that lick from the previous video. So, so far I've got so that's the first four measures. <clears throat> now you'll see the next lick is a C chord doing the same thing I do with my G chord. Four, two, three, one with a hammer on. So that measure four pinch, four, two, three, one. I'm gonna four pinch and um, invert my C chord on the 14th fret. And we went over that too in the Handsome Molly video. But this one, uh, the C with the hammer on, is the same as G. Up five frets. One, two, three, four, five. So pick, chop, four, two, three, one. Okay. Now we're going to do a high G lick. You remember last time on the Handsome Molly we did this one? That one. Here we're going to do uh, another arpeggio roll type lick. And this one, here's my G down here. If I go up an entire octave, frets get real tight down here. So, a G, C, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to uh, take off my ring finger. You can either, either leave your pinky on here. I find it easier to... Uh, bring my ring finger around like so but I'm on uh, let me see 16 15 and 17 that is what I wrote yeah 16 15 and 17 now notice my thumb is on 14 so there were a couple of licks in Handsome Molly you'll remember where I used my thumb on the fifth string Same rhythm as the other two. Three, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one. Five, four rolls in a row. Okay. So, and again, you could do an alternative version like this, I suppose. <laughs> Oops. Where am I at? There I am. Like so. using your index finger on the fifth string instead of your thumb if you shift your other fingers around. My preferred method is here. You can also bring your pinky in here. Okay. Any of those are acceptable. <clears throat> I just prefer this one. Because I'm already now. This one's a little harder than the D, because because the neck's a little wider down here than it is here. Just a very subtle difference between the width of the neck, because the neck sort of tapers in width. It's widest down here and narrowest down here. So you'll want to uh, kind of work with this a little bit too. And also, uh, my thumb is a is a fret behind where my index finger here is. So you'll notice I'm on 14 with my thumb and 16 and 15 and 17. I'm also 
slightly out of tune. I think these strings are getting old. Okay. So that's where I am. Now I'm back on G now. I'm going to do the same lick again that I start off with. And then the same slide lick that I start off with. Then I'm going to go back to my G, my inverted G, which we've done before. Now this little lick is kind of reminiscent of Foggy Mountain Special and uh, I mean, yeah, Foggy, Foggy Mountain Special. Foggy Mountain Rock, some of those Scruggs tunes that uh, do this, this, something like this. And that's just that one measure. So where I'm at here, I'm my G, my inverted G. Notice my pinky's already on the first string. So I'm going to just slide it up to 12 for that first note of this measure. Use my third finger for the stretch on the 11th. Remember, if the curved line is on the right hand side, it's a stretch. If it's on the left hand side, it's a slide. Slide. And then 5, 2, 3, 8th fret, 9th fret. So, a little bit of work on that. One measure there might be in order. Now I've got a four diverse roll on my D chord. In this case, I'm going to uh, fret again with my thumb, this time on the 10th fret to give it a D seventh flavor. Okay. And then I'm gonna end it with my Foggy Mountain, what do I call this? Foggy Mountain up the neck G run number one. <laughs> for lack of a better term. Two, one, five, two. And again, go back to your Foggy Mountain Breakdown high part number one for this lick. And two, pitch. And then uh, go back and pick another one. Uh, pick another break. So. And so let's go back to the beginning and get all the way through this one time or several times. One, two, ready, go.
clicks. We're not necessarily learning this as the backup pattern for will the circle be unbroken, even though it works pretty well, I think, as a backup pattern for will the circle. But the whole point of this is to teach you different licks for G that you can pick and choose from, and C and D as well, okay? And we'll just stick with G, C, and D for now.